fox that's in charge of the hen house. Personally, I'd be in favor of Congress just nationalizing the Fed and, and getting the bankers out of there. They're, they're, you know, they're just stealing from the American people. Put it directly in the hands of Congress and, and let Congress decide. Uh, rather than this cabal of uh, bankers deciding their own rates of profit uh, at the expense of the American people. Since the Federal Reserve's creation in 1913, patriots have labored tirelessly to alert the American people to the true nature of the Federal Reserve. Throughout its 90-plus year history, most Americans falsely believed that the Federal Reserve was a government agency. But today, scientific opinion polls show that the vast majority of the public is aware of the fact that the Federal Reserve is a front company for an offshore private banking cartel that dominates not just the United States, but almost every other nation on Earth. It's never been written about in any book that I've found as to who gave these guys the authority or permission to be the international bankers for the world. Why would you even need international bankers? Why would any government agree to, to use them? Why would you need to use them? Why can't any country create its own money? It tells you there was already an existing superstructure, already in, in existence, maybe two or three hundred years ago, to give these guys permission to somehow be the overlords of all money for all countries. Polls also reveal that 75% of Americans demand a public audit of the secretive organization. By the summer of 2009, Congressman Ron Paul's bill to audit the Fed had gained more than 280 sponsors in the House. But the private Fed's high-powered lobbyists were able to block a vote on the bill in the Senate. That only piqued the public's interest. I have another amendment. Um... I have been informed by the, that the majority plans to block consideration of uh, this amendment, which is number 1367, regarding the transparency at the Federal Reserve. Madam President, I'd like to call up amendment 1367. Without objection, the clerk will report. The Senator from South Carolina, Mr. DeMint, proposes an amendment number 1367. Senator from Nebraska. I make a point of order against the DeMint Amendment that it's legislation on appropriations. Madam President? The point of order is well taken. The amendment... I, I regret the objection. The amendment falls. The people began asking themselves, why couldn't there be an audit of the Federal Reserve? The Fed has never once been audited. In the whole period of time, in the almost 90-some-odd years, that the Fed has been around, the most powerful agency and independent agency, it has never once been audited. This is an absolute crime against the freedoms of this country. Do you think it would cause pr uh, problems for the Fed or for the economy if, if that uh, legislation was to pass? My concern about the legislation is that if the GAO is auditing not only the operational aspects of our programs and the details of the programs, but is making judgments about our policy decisions that would effectively be a takeover of monetary policy by the Congress. Is that your position that uh, uh, this bill, if it were to be passed, would interfere uh, directly with uh, interest rates, setting interest rates? If we were to raise interest rates at a meeting and someone in the Congress didn't like that and said, I want the GAO to audit that decision, wouldn't that be viewed as an interference? I, w I wouldn't think so. This is just reviewing it, and you can do what you want. The Federal Reserve has never been subjected to an outside audit. And if you audit them, it's very likely that Greenspan, Bernanke, and Volcker might all go to jail. It was announced today, earlier today, that there will be a hearing on H.R. 1207, the bill to audit the Federal Reserve Bank. This will be the first independent audit in the Federal Reserve's 96-year history, and it's long overdue. Months ago, I asked the Vice Chairman of the Federal Reserve who received the $1 trillion in funds that the Federal Reserve has handed out to domestic institutions. He said, I'm not going to tell you. And then more recently, the Chairman of the Federal Reserve, I asked him who receives the half trillion, we're talking about $500 billion, that the Federal Reserve handed over to foreign central banks. Who did they disseminate that money to? And he said, I don't know. Half a trillion dollars, and he doesn't know. It's long overdue. We need to audit the Federal Reserve, and I'm happy to say that that's, we're going to have a hearing on that very soon. 
The only way, really, America can get out of the current mess is you've got to shut the Fed down completely, get rid of the Fed. You've got to put the money printing mechanism back under the roof of the federal government instead of outsourcing it to the Fed. Why were the bank's front men, Alan Greenspan and Ben Bernanke, all over the news saying that they were above the law? What is the uh, proper relationship, what should be the proper relationship between a chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? There is no ag other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. What the relationships are uh, don't frankly matter. A grassroots movement demanding that the private Federal Reserve be nationalized exploded in size across the country. The momentum had shifted. Now, the arrogant central bankers were the ones running scared. They had planned to use their stage crisis to bring in an all-powerful central bank of the world. Immediately, every country goes into action at the same time. Uh, the, the International Monetary Fund is mentioned at the G20 meeting. They say that it must be brought to its full power. And we need a Bretton Woods Part Two for world taxation. What is global government? For decades, the media denied it existed. But now they're saying, oh, yes, there's going to be a global government, a new bank of the world, and we're going to pay our carbon taxes to it. What is it? It's nothing more than a private, hostile, corporate takeover of every sovereign nation on Earth. And then when you look at the philosophy of these global corporate chieftains, it is one of domination of the poor, domination of the population. It is a view that human life just isn't cheap. No, human life is a negative. And so no matter what they do, they have the rationale that it's in the greater interest to get rid of more human lives. They are so arrogant and they're so sure of themselves, they're saying, yes, we created the European Union, we created the Euro, and these are from the people of the Bilderberg. We are going to create a world bank. We're going to create a world government. They're saying it out loud and clearly. Suddenly, across the planet, their regional front banks had been identified by sovereign populations as the illegitimate shadow governments that they are. The controllers had moved too quickly and revealed their hand. Populations around the globe were seeing through the establishment's facade, past the puppet governments and to the global architects that were pulling their strings. Where are the American people? Why have they lost their dignity? What is stopping them from speaking out? Why have they become little mice that follow Pied Pipers? How can they look up to these pathetic politicians? Go sit down. I have a question for this young man. He has the right to be represented. I'm his father, and I want to talk to you face to face. Look at your I'm not a lobbyist with all kind of money to stuff in your pocket so that you can cheat the, the pit citizens of this country. So I'll leave, and you can do whatever the hell you please to do. One day, God's going to stand before you, and he's going to judge you and the rest of your damn cronies up on the hill. And then you will get your just desserts. As the public begins to awaken to the fact that Barack Obama has cold-bloodedly betrayed the pledges he made to the American people, the establishment media and Democratic leaders have invoked the tactic of divide and conquer. I think they're astroturf. Uh, oh, you be the judge of carrying swastikas and symbols like that to a, a town meeting on health care. An overwhelming portion of the intensely demonstrated animosity toward President uh, Barack Obama is based on the fact that he is a black man. Desperate to ram their agenda through. They have played the race and class cards. You start to wonder whether, in fact, the word socialist is becoming a code word, whether or not socialist is becoming the new N-word. When I heard people going after the first lady and the number right. of staff people they have, it sounds racist to me. It is essential that the establishment play the population off against each other, along the lines of Republican-Democrat, liberal-conservative, 
black and white. As long as the